we're with the North Country Honor Flight on its way to Washington, D.C. on a beautiful May 18th, 2013. We spent the whole time coming down here to this rest stop at Half Moon on the bus, feeling bad for the guys on their motorcycles. And we, we had to give them about two minutes till it, till it did stop chattering. Harry Kudwe, how are you? I'm well, sir. A little chilly because uh, when we left Plattsburgh, it was 39 degrees. And uh, we had to maintain about 70 miles an hour uh, as we came down through. So you can imagine what the wind chill was as we came down through there. Uh, I don't know how you did it. I think well, that's a, a wonderful thing you've done to organize this. Tell us all about what this is all. This wonderful escort is all about. Well, sir, it's all about the World War II vets. That's the reason that we're here to do that. We want to honor them. Uh, those guys put up with a lot more than we have in, in this short short hour and a half trip down from Plattsburgh. So, you know, they're they're the true heroes. They're the ones. They're the reason that we're able to ride these motorcycles today. So uh, that's what it's about. And these these guys come out of here. Come out. Um, we had about uh, 50 bikes come out of Plattsburgh, and we're picking up another uh, 30 bikes right here. So are you really? Yeah. 80 bikes? Yep. Yeah. That's what the number's going to be right around 80. We got a few more to pick up on the way down. Thank through, goodness so. the weather's up by about 10 degrees. 10 degrees. I saw that when I hit, when we hit Lake George. It was <laughs> maybe it'll be 50 by the time you get to Albany. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? We may be lucky. Yes, sir. That's for sure. How many years you've been riding, Harry? Uh, well. I've been riding since 1967. Have you really? Yeah, I was 17 years old, bought my first motorcycle. What was it? It was a, a, an old Triumph uh, motorcycle back then, but I'm now riding Harleys. Of course you are. Yeah, yeah. Now, how many, are there different groups re represented? There are. Uh, we've got the Leathernecks uh, Marines. Uh, they're local. They, we just picked them up here. We've got the Patriot Guard, um, which is kind of behind us here. And then... Uh, uh, my organization is the Combat Vets. We're all combat vets, all air. We have from World War II right down to Afghanistan vets. Harry, I, they're waiting for us on the bus. You and I could chat for a while. I want to thank you very much for what you're doing here today. No, sir, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate what everybody else is doing. We're glad to do it. Have a great day, Harry. Thank you, sir. Stay warm. Put your gloves on. I will. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we're back on the bus and we're underway again. Rodney Wright, how are you? I'm fine. The sun is shining right through the window on your face. It's a great day. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. So, uh, what do you think so far? I, I think it's an honor to be honored like this here. Uh, it's just absolutely great. Fantastic. You know, I've asked some of the other guys who were on the bus today, when did you first hear about this North Country Honor flight? Oh my goodness, that was probably uh, about three, four, three months ago, maybe. You, you, did you think it was a good idea at the time? Well, I, I, I knew back in 2004, when they started the uh, this honor flight out of Syracuse. And, uh, and in fact, uh, one, of, one of the staff writers of the press took his father to it, and there was a very, very nice write-up in the paper in 2004. I still have it. You thought maybe, maybe it'll get to the North Country someday? I never thought about that. I think it's pretty special. Yes. I mean, we've enjoyed meeting all the people, Danny and the whole group, and this bus ride, is just, it's like going to summer camp for me. It's really <laughs> great. I'm, well, I've been looking forward to this for the last couple of months. You know, Gordy, it was uh, 69 years ago that the war ended in Europe. Think about that for a minute. That was 69 years ago and I was there. Were you really? You think about that for a minute. I can, but you, but you seem like a teenager to me, Rodney. Yeah. What, what were you doing when you heard the news? Can you remember? When I heard the news about the honor flight? No, about when the war was over. Oh, I, I don't know if I want to tell you. <laughs> you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to. No, I tell you, you know, I don't know. I was in the uh, Battle of the Bones and the Battle of the Ardennes, and we heard that the war was over. Uh, we were issued Eisenhower jackets, and we you know, had a little bit too much to drink, and uh, I fell and bit my, uh, my Eisenhower jacket off. <laughs> Come on! Yeah. Have well, you waited 69 years to tell that story? 60, to the world. 69 years, yeah. 
tell us a little bit about your service. Did you? How old were you when you joined? 18. Were you? Some guys are telling me they joined on their 17th birthday, if you can believe it. Yes. So, so you were how old? 18? 18. 18. Did you have any idea what was going to happen? Yes, I had two brothers in the service. Oh, you did? Older brothers? Yes. Yeah. And you wanted to go to? Not really. I mean, <laughs> I was driving. Uncle Sam wants you. I was out of school, and of course, I, and I had to register, and I was drafted. Oh, well, you were drafted? Yeah. Well, where you see, it was in, in, in September of 84. Uh, September of 44. 44. Yeah. And uh, we ended up in Camp Golf, South Carolina. Oh, you did? Really? For basics, and they woke us up at 2 o'clock in the morning because the Fort Meade, Maryland. Gee, almost like this morning, huh? At 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah! Fort Meade, Maryland, oh my. And uh, those of us, more than 2,000 of us, on the Lewis Pass tour, which was a, a luxury liner that probably during these times would come and carry 600. Isn't that amazing? Pressed a lot of those luxury liners into service, didn't they? Yes, they did. They, they, they tried to do that with the Normandy that had caught on fire. I watched it burn down in New York Harbor a long time ago. So what happened after that? Well, we were see, we were a long ship. We didn't have, we did not have a convoy. Oh, you didn't? No. So it took us 13 days to go over because we uh, we got you know to get out of the main. Wow, because of, of the subs. Ah. And uh, so we just went you know, up and down. We didn't go straight. No, you never go straight anyway. Uh, <laughs> no. 13 days. So was it good duty or not good duty? Were there, were there good times as well as the bad times? Well, there was good times after the war. Of course. <laughs> so it was really tough? It was tough. It was, it was hard, but 18 years old, you know, uh, we, we survived it. And the good, we were told when we joined the outfit that if we survived it for a week, we would stand a good chance of going home. Isn't so, that amazing when you're told if you, could, if you make it for a week, you, you might go home? Yeah, they were, they were shelling us with 88s and uh, sure. mortars, and uh, we were in the Hurricane Forest. I got knocked out. Oh, you did, right? I, I, I woke up on a hospital train. No kidding. A shell went off close, close by? Shell shot, yeah. The forest, yeah. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. Were, were, you, were, you, were you injured besides that? Or no, just? no, it was a shell shot. And, uh, uh, I come out of the road. I first lost my hearing. Did you lose it? Did it stay gone or did it? No, no, I have, well, I, I have hearing aids, but uh, I make out all right. I'm just, I'm I just, think you make out just great. I'm just fortunate my age to uh, be in the condition that I'm in. Now, when you went in, did you join, did you get drafted with some of your buddies or did you go alone? Okay, um, we, we, my father worked in the railroad. The, the, the Buffalo Railroad. No kidding. Yeah, so I went to school in Messina for the last three years. You did? Because, because my uh, mother and my other two brothers was, uh, were working in the aluminum plant. In Alcoa, yeah. But I had registered in Boston's point. So, uh, I mean, yes, I did. I went in with, uh, with two Boston's pointers who I knew. Melrose and Johnny Merrill. Oh, really? Johnny Merrill? You probably remember him. Oh, of course. Yeah. Did you stay with them for a while? No. 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 Just, 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 just doing basic. That was it. That was it, huh? Well, when we got overseas, uh, we were on the, we were on the Lewis Pass tour going over together. So when we got over there, I went with the 78th Infantry Division. And I don't know where they were. They were. Have you stayed in touch with any of those guys you met while you were in the service? No. No kidding. I don't know where they were. They just go their separate ways, huh? Yeah. So 
Well, you've never been, have you been to Washington, D.C. at all? Yes. My wife and I went here several years ago. But I'm looking forward to going with the guys. It's nice. So you met some of these guys for the first time. Oh, yeah. yeah. You didn't know a lot of these guys until no. the honor flight, huh? That's right. Isn't it amazing? But there's a process point of that down here with us. Oh, um, sure. And did you know that I've known yeah. him and his son for a long time. Oh, that's great. So this will be a long day, but it'll be a good day, I think, right, Ron? I'm honored to have the commander of Post 912 in Ross's Point. Yes, Bob St. John is my guardian. Yeah, that big smile on his face. Uh, he's, I'm telling you, he's a super, super he's guy. He's a good guy and a good friend. Rodney, you are the best. I thank you personally from Hometown Cable, Calvin and me, for your service. Let me shake your hand. Have a great day and enjoy this day, will you? I'm going to. Make some memories, Rodney. Thank Thanks thank again. You. Thank you, boy. A little smoother right now than it was coming through the mountains. Berwyn Cowles, how are you? I am fine. Good to see you. Yes, it's good to see you and good to see you here. I was very happy to see you. We were thrilled to come down here today. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I would have, I would have been willing to, to ride on the back bumper if I could get down here today. <laughs> yes. This is pretty special, isn't it? This is superly special. I never dreamed it. All the 30 years, 50 years, 60, 60 years, 67 68. years, and I'd ever make a flight like this. This honor flight has been something else. You know, that's it's designed to honor people like you who spent so so long defending our nation, and it's about time, I think, after all these years, to make yeah. a special day for you. This is really wonderful. It's, 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 Every time we would go by and I'm flying, or somebody saluting, it just about bring a tear to my eyes. It does. Uh, it melts uh, your heart, doesn't it? Just, it just gets right into the heart. And honest to God, it does. Uh, as old as I am, and the experiences I've been through in the war, it still touches. It touches very sharp. But almost tears. And you know, it's supposed to be tough to bend. No. Well, the tough, tough, the toughest people are the softest people. Yes. I still cry when I hear Amazing Grace and the old Rugged Cross and a few of those yeah. great old songs. Uh, but meeting people like you and knowing, having friends like you who've been through so much are, are so deeply meaningful for me. Because I never cool, uh -huh. uh, never got drafted, stayed in college for six years spent the rest of my life after I came up here supporting the mission of Plattsburgh Air Force Base, supporting people like you who, who just paved the way for people like me. And I was just thinking when you sat down here, young people watching this program on Hometown Cable have no idea what a war experience is like. Thank God, they may never have to. You, take you, this, you learn more in a short period of time than yeah. you ever dreamed. You take this busload of men here. You can imagine the warriors that we have aboard here. Think about it. No, no not yet. Just, just think about it. Just, it just amazes me that they're getting around pretty good. You know, You're here. With the help. And I, I don't need any help up and down this here. Yeah, you a man. I'm, I'm a young man yet. I'm only 88. <laughs> That's about how many keys there are on the piano, I think. <laughs> think about that. Tell me a little bit about your, your war experience now. Were you drafted or did you join? Or? Uh, no, I was asked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a polite way of saying it. I was asked like if, I I said like, if I would like to be in the service. What would I like to be? I said, okay, first of all, I would like to be in the Air Corps. I wanted to be an engine uh, on, on board a ship to, to uh, machine gun. And, uh, but, uh, I was uh, a little bit on the colorblind side. And so he said, you're colorblind, you can't go into the Air Corps. But the Marine Corps is right there, we'll take you. Of course they will. And, uh, they need a few good men, the right? Corps, he said, what, what, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a farmer. And I run to crackers, 
trucks and stuff like that. It's like, oh, we, we need people like you in the amphibious corps. So that's why they shipped it to uh, from the first line. From uh, uh, the boot camp. And I made PFC out of boot camp. And then all this was a leader ever since. So I went to the north to uh, uh, the amphibious base there, uh, the amphibious tractors. And then I learned, and then they said, well, we need you to teach, so we're shipping you to, uh, to California. And that's where I got on the, the, uh, the instructors. And uh, there was uh, probably 15 or 20 of us that went there for, for instructors. And we made instructors there, and we were special people. Uh, we didn't have to salute anything because we had a little badge that said instructor, um, we were an instructor. And, 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 and uh, the, uh, even the colonels, and the different uh, uh, branches of the service, like the British. You know, I had the Dutch Marines that I was teaching, I had the British that I was teaching. Ship to shore, taking cargo off a ship, and putting it onto a, like the Amtraks that we had. The Amtraks could go over the, the reefs and the little sandbars and go right into land and go wherever we they wanted that boat of men, or equipment, or ammunition, or food and water. Water was very essential because the the, the, the uh, very, very essential water was because of the, the, the fumes from, you know, and, 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 and then uh, uh, went along and went, got overseas, and got overseas, and then when I was into the second marine division, second Amtrak battalion, and uh, I was Three, three of the Amtraks put together, and I made the squad leader over for those Amtraks. And our job was to go aboard the ship. We could back that up the ramp of an LST. Oh boy. And we'd take on men or supplies and go into the ship. So wherever they wanted them, we'd land them there, then come back out and pick up the wounded. out to the ship for them, to the hospital ship, which was an LSD, back up the ramp, and come out from them and take another load of supplies, men, machine guns, or, or uh, ammo, whatever they needed, because we have a radio man with us, and so we go take these people, three ships, three of the Amtraks, and take them wherever they wanted them, ammunition, water, Have you said Semper Fi over the years? Oh, more than a few million? Many, 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 <laughs> many, many, many Semper Fi's. <laughs> but there are fewer Marine Corps than there are the rest of them. The Marine Corps, one, the rest are the, the Army, the Navy, the CBs, the, the, uh, all the others, you know, put together. And we were just, I was in the 2nd Marine Division, 2nd Amtrak Battalion. See, you take, you take a division of uh, 20,000 men to, to, to a division. They're telling us we got to wrap it up, Irwin. Okay. You're a good friend. I want to thank you. I want to tell you just one thing. Yes. The dishonor guard, dishonor flight. The best. Super, super, yes. super the best. 
What's your name? My name is Cassie. I'm his granddaughter. And you're a good granddaughter. Of course. She told us 20 minutes ago, you got to wrap it up, you got to wrap it up. Guess what? These stories You can are... have him talk all you want. It's not me. I know. <laughs> these stories are so important. They are. No matter what goes on, these stories have to be told. But I want to thank right. you for your service, Mark. Good to see you, my friend. You're the, you are the best. You tell these people. I want to grow up to be just like you. <laughs> you tell these people that are putting this flight on for us, this honor flight. They're the best. They're the very best. They've done a great job. They're doing, and they're doing a great job. It's wonderful. It's we want you to have the best day of your life right now, today. It is. Thank you for being a Thank good you. granddaughter. Of course. See you later, Mayor. Get up Thank carefully. Let's start. All right, Bobby Brooks. Yeah. How are you? Well, I. What if he's related to our Miss Brooks? I, I I used to I used to be a lot better than this until some guy who weighed 300 pounds slipped on the bus and took me here. But I'm all set. I come back. Uh, I bounced back. Just I like think him. I'm the only guy in the bus that weighs that much. Oh no, he's bigger than you are. Are you TJ? Yes, I am. How are you? Not bad at all. I'm so glad to meet you and to have you here. I don't think we've ever met, have we? We met one time at the barber shop, so I think it was the 50th anniversary. Oh my gosh, that wasn't last Tuesday, was it, Bobby? Oh, oh, oh it was a while God. back. You know, you've got a lot of histories in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah. How, how long were the barber shoppers? 51 years now. Yeah, think about that. Hey, that, uh, I, I just had a... When Danny Cephas, we were over here at uh, Sweeney's the other night, and we were all going to be told what to do and how to do it, all that nice stuff. And then they had a flag presentation, and he came over and he said, Bob, he says, would you do me a favor? I said, all right. He said, I'd like to have you sing the national anthem. You remembered all the words, too. Oh, yeah. That's one of the hardest songs. No matter whether you've been singing all your life, it's a very hard It is song difficult. To sing. Yeah, and because there's always a, like almost a key change. Oh yeah. But uh, you did it. I knew you did and I knew you could. Every time I see Bob, I say we gotta do a few choruses of Coney Island baby. <laughs> I bet, you, I bet you used to sing that song years ago. Many, many years ago, and I, I, I remember another song that was a favorite. It was called The Auctioneer. Oh, The Auctioneer song? Yeah. Oh, and, uh, that's always fun. I had, a, I had a quartet that was really, we, we really enjoyed it. I think if we had had more time, we could have really established a sound. And, uh, but we did very well. There's nothing like barbershops. I bet you didn't sing when you were in the service, though, did you? Oh, sure. Did you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 when we used to travel through the North Country when uh, we were children, my dad and mom used to, we used to fight of who was going to sit in the front seat. But uh, generally, I got in the back, uh, uh, and dad says, well, Ma, you drive. We got back there, and we'd harmonize. Uh, uh, what, what, what? It was a musical family all the way. All right. Oh, yes. Well, when you were in the service, you say? Oh, sure. Did, did you have quartets? Uh, not, yeah, well, sort of, yes, in the beginning. I, I met with a, I can't seem to remember his name, it's Barnes. And uh, he, fortunately, he was on the same, he was on the same mount that I was, uh, on the same director. And then we didn't have, uh, when uh, when it got quietened down a little, we used to, we used to just sing, You are my sunshine <laughs> and my only sunshine. Yeah. And, 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 and I harmonized with him. And, uh, That's great. Yeah. So, too. Wow, I don't know what that smell is. That's brakes. You think it's brakes? Yeah. Yeah, the brakes shoes do that. Oh, yeah, baby. They, they ought to put a caution sign up here too because we got to slow down. Well, yeah, we're we're in a, we're, we're I, there's a little road construction going on. <laughs> so talk about your your uh, service days. I uh, my service days, I went in as I said, I was an 18 year old, and. Uh, I, I, uh, I did the boot camp and then the pre-commissioning and then I was a plank owner on the USS Topeka which was brought into the service along with the, the other class. It was a yes. Cleveland class. Well, and uh, with that in mind, we had actually Concrutif at our own. We had our own little division, Concrutif 15. And we had an admiral, two-star admiral, rear admiral, Carl F. Holden. 
and he was a, they were generous people. We, we just had a great time. And as a matter of fact, he was sitting on the bridge about from here to that second seat up there. And the captain was there, and of course I was in the forward quadrant, starboard side. And uh, it was, I got that, I, I got my training at Newport, uh, uh, Rhode Island, and then aboard ship. Another water was beam, beam, gone. And you were out of here. I were out of here. But where, where did your travels take you? Uh, we, we went out the Atlantic for a while. And then we, we came back. We hit a hurricane and we went into Newport, Virginia and got our repairs. And uh, we got our dark gray paint. And I said, oh, Pacific, here we come. And then we went right down. And it's got a few islands along uh, in that place. And we went through the, uh, we went through the canal. And we headed out and uh, stopped off in Hawaii for a while and did a lot of a lot of drone firing and practicing and everything. And soon Hawaii was in the back and we ended up in the Carolines at Ulysses Atoll, which seemed to be the port or the port fleet at the time. And so and they felt, well, let's go do a little bit more when we weren't going on to see the real thing we were rehearsing. And uh, the ship, the ship was fantastic. We, we had uh, our, our, uh, our third fleet. It was unbelievable. A lot of camaraderie aboard ship, isn't it? Yes, as much as you go on there, uh, everyone becomes uh, up there. We had a, a marine division, uh, not a division, but a, an attachment because of the Admiral and being on ship. And uh, they were going to have their own festival. And then the, the Major come down and he says, the boys would like to, they'd like to eat with the sailors. And it was true. The officers and the men. We did our. We did our. our, our we'd stand our watch. We'd stand the morning. Uh, our morning call. The plan of the day. And I. I, I actually kept a couple of the plans of the day. I, did you really? Yes, I got them in a door somewhere. Yeah, I got them up there somewhere. Oh, you even brought them on. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Know. I I didn't bring a few little things. Along. Isn't yeah. it great? And we, you know, it's good to look back at the good times. War, war is not fun. Yeah, war is hell, as they say. Yeah, it was sad. Now, boys, some of it is tough. It was. And uh, some of the people, as you go, and uh, you know, it's, it, uh, actually, the main part of this whole trip is meeting people with yeah. honor like this. And we, we, we there's just a comradeship that comes with being in the, together. Wait till you get to the memorial and see yeah, other other imagine. people that you may not have seen or ever seen yes, before. It's, uh, Hey, I, well, I, I, we got friends for life that's going to be here, I, I, actually. I, you like we, this idea, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Napoleon Bobby? Light and I and uh, Merwin Collins, uh, we call ourselves the Three Musketeers because we were the three of the, the first three of China. Three Musketeers. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> you, you guys are quite a group, I'll tell you. Oh, that. yeah, they were. And, 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 uh, it was fun. Uh, we came home. The thing what happened, we got into sort of a silent stage. We went on to our life, the GI Bill, all that kind of stuff, got our education, and then got on to our jobs, met a lovely lady, had some family. That's a nice story, huh? And, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was, it was just, what happened after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, he came with me. And his mother, we opened up our sap the other day, and it was a little envelope, then to my two boys, have a good time. Yep. Don't you love it? Oh, yeah. And, uh, but the, and then all of a sudden, a guy by the Dan Cavins comes along, some 67 years later, and says, what did we go? Would you like going to the honor flight? What do you think? I did it. A great, it what a great concept. I, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe I didn't happened. know much about it until I met Danny. Until we started talking to you guys, you and I have known each other for a long time. Look. Uh, Gordy, I don't know if you were with us this morning at, at the Field of Honor. Remember the 26th Infantry and all those people that went on and marched on that field at the uh, at the old at the old base. It's amazing. It's amazing. And here we were this morning, and the line going down, and then we had the current troops and National Guard there. So and, impressive. And then the colonel there stood there. And he said, all right, I'm going to call your names out one by one, and I want you to come out on the bus. And we did, and the people were just going like this. Did they have all these motorcycles and leaders on? Oh, and, and we met them, too. We, we talked yeah. with them. Yeah. And a uh, good bunch of people. I, unbelievable, yes. Unbelievable. We, we talked for a few minutes where you were having a little rest back there with, with Harry Treadway. He organized all the motorcycle groups coming down here today, and I think that's very special, too. Yeah, and, nice uh, to have us and we certainly, 
Well, like I said, it's a it's a, it's an honor that I call to the people. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it. Yeah, could be here. Well, they, we're glad to have you here, Bobby. <laughs> well, I, I really happy to be here. It. You're doing such a great job. Good to be your friend. Uh, you're so the best. Have a great day. Enjoy it, PJ. See you well, later. Done. Okay. All right.